Moving right along with our Unity Extravaganza. In the hot seat now, the handheld LCR meter, the UT622A. Here we go. Unity. Now, when I got the 622, man, about a year ago, I've had this thing for a while on the bench. I had pitting, putting it through the uh, test regiment like you wouldn't believe. Um, it came in one of these brown boxes, not that colorful Unity thing we so often see. No, 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 this was just a brown basic box, but hey, that's okay. Um, look at that. Inside, we have our manual. Now, kind of irked me a bit. Um, yeah, it's all in Chinese. So, not even an English copy here. Ah, uh, why? What else? Well, we have our calibration mechanism right here. It goes right into the meter to calibrate and get this thing uh, on baseline so we can have very good results when we're testing. Also comes with this uh, LCR software and a certificate of guarantee. Now look at the date on this, 29th of September, 2020. So yeah, I've had it for a while and man, I've been impressed. This always has a really nice Unity quality. Once again, that rubber inlay part of the meter itself. Uh, no noticeable grooves or anything to latch onto, but don't forget this is an LCR meter. So chances are it's gonna stay on your trusty bench. Nice soft touch buttons, um, really good tilt stand. Again, boy, Unity sure nails it when it comes to tilt stands, nice and wide. This puppy ain't going anywhere. All in all, quality wise, I have zero complaints. 622A ships with that really nice TFT display. Thin film transistor, liquid crystal display. Um, you know, compared to the OLED, maybe not quite the high quality image you're gonna get. Uh, usually OLED wins because it's just got a nicer blackness level, uh, no matter what the viewing angle. However, uh, with the TFT display, you definitely get nicer brightness and I would say uh, improved efficiency as well. So it's a trade off, but hey, still, this screen looks like a million bucks. By the way, this is powered by a rechargeable 1800 milliamp hour lithium battery. That's right, rechargeable. Goes right here on the side uh, with that micro USB. Wish it was a USB C, but it's a micro USB. Anyway, uh, takes about maybe a couple of hours to come to a full charge, and that battery does last a long time. So, uh, hey, very nice. Another really nice feature is the fact that you get a primary and a secondary parameter. What the heck does that mean? Well, uh, when you press the inductance, capacitance, resistance, or impedance button, that will give you a choice of what you want. Right now we have it here in capacitance because I check a lot of camps with this device. So my secondary parameter right now is set up for equal series resistance, ESR, as it's widely known. But if I didn't want that, I also have an option to change it to dissipation, quality, phase angle, uh, phase angle degree, I believe, phase angle radian, as well as ESR. So lots of manageability and options with this LCR meter. And another feature that I really love is the fact you have not one, but four different frequencies. That's right. Starting off here with one kilohertz, as you can see right at the top, one kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 100 hertz, and finally 120 hertz. So unlike some uh, portable LCR meters, you have a lot of different frequency options, which is definitely uh, neat. Have it side to side against the Sanwa LCR meter over here. And uh, yeah, pretty well the same size. Sanwa's maybe an inch smaller, um, but look at that display, wow. Now, don't get me wrong, I do like the Sanwa. In fact, this is a beautiful multimeter. Well, LCR meter, I, it's, it, it's one of my faves. Um, but that, <laughs> that wonderful TFT display on the Unity, well, it just puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Another cool feature is the fact that I can use my Sanwa tweezers with these, this Unity model. Look at that, it actually fits like a glove. I mean, perfect. So, uh, wow, that is a bonus. Now you can get a separate uh, tweezer add-on for the Unity. It's about 120 bucks, so it's not cheap. Um, but yeah, to have this, you know, kind of swap and go functionality here, very nice. 
right now have a 100 microfarad capacitor in here. And this is set up by default to show both the capacitance as well as the ESR value. Let's take a look at a couple of measurements here. I've got a uh, electrolytic capacitor directly into those uh, inserts. Always best to directly plug your component in as opposed to testing via leads, what have you, just because you're avoiding the middleman and you're gonna get a much more accurate reading this way. All right, so as you can see, I have it set right now to both capacitance as well as ESR. And we are looking at 120 Hertz right now as the default frequency. Now the frequency can be changed, like I mentioned before, 120 Hertz right now, just by hitting that frequency button over here. Now, when you change the frequency, this is where it's a good idea to look at those data sheets, see what the manufacturer recommends. Uh, wow, what a difference that makes at one Hertz. 10 uh, kilohertz as well, nowhere near what this uh, capacitor is, which it has a reading of, let's just double check here, 35 volt, 470 microfarad. Let's just put it back in. Now I'll put it back to the recommended frequency of 100 Hertz, and you can see yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Now I've got a 100 nanofarad Sprague capacitor, and let's take a look at that. And coming in at 109 uh, nanofarads, so looking good. Once again, uh, it's really nice to have this screen. If I wanted to change my secondary parameter, all I have to do is click the button that says DQ0 ESR, and you can see that secondary parameter is now changing. So I put it back to ESR, and wow, what a gorgeous looking. So next up, I've got a 47 micro Henry inductor, and right now it's set for capacitance. So if I was just to put that inductor in like so, you can see we're getting some erroneous errors here, and that's because I have to now select uh, inductance. So hit the LCRZ auto button right here, and we wanna get it into inductance. There we go. So 47 micro Henry is what we want, and coming in at around, well, that's pretty well spot on, I gotta say. Just for the heck of it, let's just compare that to uh, the Sanwa. Now, unfortunately, unlike the Sanwa, I don't have a standard hold here which uh, kind of bites, but uh, nonetheless, I don't have a whole feature. So I'm um, gonna have to pull out that inductor. So it's around 47, pretty well spot on. Let's put it into the Sanwa. See what the Sanwa says. And coming in at 45.7 micro Henry's, so awfully close. And you can see the difference in frequency here. We are at one kilohertz on the Sanwa. So I'm just gonna change that to match the unity at 100 kilohertz. Let's see if the reading's any different. So at 100 kilohertz, surprisingly enough, I'd actually dropped a few. So we're down to uh, 40, just, uh, just under 41 micro Henry's. So putting it back to the uh, standard one kilohertz for this Sanwa, at least, it really prefers that. And there we are. Close I'm just going to hit the hold button on the Sanwa. I've set the unity to the same frequency, 1 kilohertz. And let's try that 47 micro Henry inductor one more time. And yeah, well, look at that now. It's pretty well in agreement with the Sanwa at 1 kilohertz. Okay, I couldn't resist. I've got these Sanwa tweezers now uh, plugged into that unity. And let's just take a look, see here. Um, what do we got? This is uh, a little transformer over here. Let's see what we're gonna get on the unity. So that's coming in at around 21 micro Henry. All right, now let's see what the Sanwa says. Okay, I plugged the tweezers into the Sanwa. Let's just turn the light on the Sanwa because it's just not nearly as easy on the eyes as that unity. And here we go. So we had 21 for the Unity, and look at that, 21.4 for the Sanwa. So pretty well spot on in agreement. So definitely these tweezers, especially when components are uh, on board, uh, definitely the tweezers can come in really handy. Now the Unity ships for around 250 Canadian, around 200 US dollars. Uh, compared to that Sanwa, which is about double the price. So it is keeping up with the big boys. 
Man, oh man, look at the components on this. Whoa, that is like a miniature city. This thing is just loaded with components from end to end. Oh man. Uh, right off the get-go, there's a bit of a daughter board, if you will, and I'm seeing a lot of flux. So I am going to clean that off before I put it back together because uh, that can definitely have an impact on your reading uh, over time. So I'm going to clean that off. Um, oh, yes, look at that. So we have some calibration pots over here. And oh, what do we have here? Let me just switch this around, do a switcheroo. So get a nice and close look at that Altera Max 2 EPM 240T. That is a non-volatile, part of the Max 2 family, um, non-volatile memory, six layer of metal flash. Uh, whoa, this thing is quite the performer. Has uh, multiple uh, high IO cans, counts, fast performance, and uh, you name it. It's one of those low cost, low power CPLDs uh, instant on the whole nine yards. Uh, nice, nice circuitry. The main IC right over there, look at that. That is the STM32 MCU 32-bit ARM. Uh, oh, beautiful. 120 megahertz. This little guy has, I believe, about, oh, up to 1023 on the core mark. Uh, very, very nice. Definitely high performance, high performing, and it's going to give you years of unfettered, dedicated service for your LCR meter. All in all, uh, really nice, really nice. Um, yeah, this is a beauty to behold. We have some factory calibration pots over there as well. Uh, headers, I should say. But all in all, very, very nice. I just got to clean that flux. I don't like that flux on the daughter board. That's the only thing. Got to get rid of that. Okay, give that uh, riser board a good cleaning with IPS. And uh, yeah. Okay, gave that a good cleaning with some alcohol, and oh man, that looks a lot Attention better. detail with those insert slots. Look at that, man. Oh, wow, that is very nice. Nice, nice, nice. Big, clean uh, brass, and awesome. What can I say? Good job. And there's no shielding on the opposite side of that uh, LCR meter. Too bad. Closing thoughts on Unity UT622A handheld LCR meter. Oh yeah, this is a booyah. Oh, yeah. Hey, if you're gonna have one LCR meter that is on the upper edge, definitely put this on your short list. This 622A is super dependable, super reliable, does a really good job, is easy on the eyes, that battery holds a charge for a long, long time, and at the end of the day, I think you get amazing bang for the buck. Probably wish it would have shipped with those tweezers or uh, some other accoutrement considering the uh, price tag, but it didn't. And what can I say? That sucks. But as you can see, you can mix and match, and at the end of the day, you can always get those optional add-ons if you need them. Hey, this is a great foray into the world of professional LCR meters without breaking the bank. The Unity UT622A gets a solid four out of five stars. Oh, I love the screen on this 622A. Man, it is awesome. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Unity Week continues. Oh, aren't we having fun? Till the next one, keep on testing.